Greetings, kind people, and welcome to Jellystone Park. You will see some signs around about uh, not feeding the bears. This rule does not apply to me. Hey, bear, beat it, get lost. Yogi is the smarter than average bear, created by Minka producers William Hanna and Joe Barbera in 1958. Originally debuting in The Huckleberry Hound Show, Yogi was a runaway success, even outshining the popularity of Huckleberry himself. Yogi was given his own show in 1961, going on to headline more than 10 television series and star in half a dozen director video and television movies and two theatrical films, as well as Hanna Barbera's most popular and heavily utilised characters. In 2022, Yogi Bear celebrates almost 65 years, and to help him I will trace his entire evolution from 1958 to now. To do so, we will look at the character's entire history, touching on his various changes and influences over more than six decades of series, specials, feature films and expanded media, even touching on the early cartoons that heavily inspired his creation. In this edition of Cartoon Evolution. By the middle 50s, William Hanna and Joseph Barbera were two of the leading minds in cartoon creation. Helping to establish MGM as a powerhouse cartoon studio, they had created Tom and Jerry, which eventually totaled 114 cartoons and seven Academy Award wins, and found them heads of MGM's cartoon output. However, in 1957, with audiences drifting away from the big screen and towards television, and the studio finding it more cost effective to reissue old cartoons theatrically than to create new ones, MGM closed the cartoon studio, firing their 110 employee creative staff. In response, Hanna and Barbera formed a joint venture to continue their work. Initially branded HB Enterprises, it would soon become Hanna-Barbera Productions. Just like MGM had, they planned to follow the audience and develop their very first TV series. Rough and Ready was a collection of shorts which followed a cat and dog duo, which ran between 1957 and 1960. While a somewhat forgotten gem today, it was a groundbreaking series. Not only was it one of the first animated series produced specifically for TV, but it helped pioneer an assembly line animation style, which utilised cheats and shortcuts to allow fewer drawings, resulting in rigid, limited movement. To do so, the team agreed to slash their budgets from $35,000 to only $2,700 for roughly five to seven minutes of screen time. Lauded at the time as entertaining and clever, Rough and Ready allowed Hanna-Barbera the levity to expand their empire with more cartoons, and in the late 1950s began developing a half-hour cartoon showcase, which would feature three brand new cartoons per episode. Barbera, the ideas man of the duo, came up with a number of characters to feature in recurring shorts. Huckleberry Hound, a charming yet lethargic southern dog, Pixie and Dixie, a pair of troublemaking mice or Mises, and Jinx the cat who hated them to pieces, and a cool, intelligent brown bear named Yogi. With a handful of completed cartoons, Barbera flew to Chicago to pitch the series to sponsors who could on sell it to a network. First, he took it to Kellogg's for what he would call his first pitch to anybody. He'd say, I had never sold a show before because I didn't have to. If we got an idea, we just made it for over 20 years. All of a sudden, I'm a salesman in a room with 45 people staring at me, and I'm pushing Huckleberry Hound and Yogi Bear and the Mises. Barbera described the room as being full of cranky and mean businessmen who just wanted to get lunch and a drink. Despite a somewhat uncomfortable atmosphere, the agency loved the pitch, with Barbera saying they fell off their chairs laughing at the cartoons, and immediately bought the show. The series was originally set to use Yogi Bear in the starring role. However, Kellogg's felt he was far too similar to numerous other cartoon bears. MGM's Barney Bear, Disney's Humphrey Bear, and the US Forest Service's Smokey Bear. Huckleberry was instead moved to the front, with Yogi in a featured role. Huckleberry, as well as starring in his own cartoon shorts, would host each show, like a 1950s showman in a circus tent, presenting the cartoons to audiences in wraparounds and 
and bridging sequences. Yogi would occasionally appear in these sequences as somewhat of a sidekick. Debuting in 1958, The Huckleberry Hound Show was an immediate success, even winning an Emmy Award for Outstanding Children's Program in its very first season, making it the first animated series to ever win an Emmy. The program grew so popular it made Hanna-Barbera a household name and further solidified limited animation as a legitimate art form, allowing them to expand even further over the following years. It wasn't however Huckleberry Hound that won over the adoration of audiences, but Yogi. Yogi's cartoons were set in Jellystone Park, a parody of Yellowstone National Park in the western United States. Here Yogi gets up to all kinds of trouble, such as stealing picnic baskets from park visitors, his wild antics regularly enraging park ranger Smith. Along for the ride is Yogi's best pal Boo Boo, an adult dwarf bear who, according to Yogi voice artist Dawes Butler, is Yogi's conscience, often dissuading his risky behaviour. Boo Boo's voice artist Don Messick also noted that he was the intermediary for children in an adult world. Like many Hanna-Barbera characters, which were parodies of then popular characters and celebrities, Yogi's personality, mannerisms and looks were a lampoon of Art Carney's character Ed Norton in popular sitcom The Honeymooners, with Butler delivering a similar slow and dopey drawl with long flourish pronunciations of large words. You be the, the, the senior clerk in transit authority. I'd be the sewer inspector. Boy, I'm telling you, we'd have the city running like clockwork. Jellystone Park, eh? What it used to be. Ah, the pickings are slim this year. A few years later, the Flintstones' as Barney would also take inspiration from Carney's Norton, and perhaps not so coincidentally, Butler voiced Barney in the pilot, and later filled in for regular voice artist Mel Blanc on a few regular episodes. Also like many Hanna-Barbera characters, Yogi came with a number of iconic catchphrases, perhaps more than any other, with lines like, Okay, boo-boo. Picnic baskets! Because I'm smarter than the average bear. Hey, hey, hey! Yeah, hey, hey! Mr. Ranger, sir! Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy! Forming his vocabulary, as did a reliance on puns. While Yogi's pork pie hat was inspired by Norton, he was given a shirt collar and necktie to create a clean line between head and body. A common limited animation cheat employed by Hanna-Barbera, so they only had to animate heads while leaving bodies motionless. There's little documentation on how the idea for Yogi spawned, however, it was almost certainly inspired by 1953 MGM Barney Bear cartoon Barney's Hungry Cousin, directed by Dick Lundy, who animated many of the Yogi cartoons. Barney Bear travels to Jellystone National Park for a picnic. Here he's spotted by a hungry wild bear who attempts to steal his picnic basket. Not only is Jellystone here the first use of the name in any media, but so is the general Yogi premise. This cartoon was actually very influential, with Barney also inspiring the creation of Disney's Humphrey Bear, whose second appearance in Donald Duck's Grin and Bear It was also a clear takeoff of the MGM cartoon. Yogi's name, on the other hand, has been subject of a persistent legend, stating that it was taken from Major League Baseball star Yogi Berra, who actually sued Hanna-Barbera for defamation over it, though later withdrew the lawsuit. The pair continuously refuted the claims, with Barbera noting that Yogi was just one of more than a hundred possible names, including Abby Bear, Zippy Bear, Willy Bear, Yoka Bear, and even Huckleberry Bear. Barbera said that the combination just sounded right, and any similarity was a coincidence. However, with Bearer one of the most famous sportsmen of the era, many animators and historians have raised eyebrows over just how coincidental it actually was. By 1960, Yogi had well and truly stolen the spotlight from Huck, totally outshining and overshadowing him in his very own show. As such, Yogi is considered the very first breakout star of animation. Yogi had even begun starring in comics, and he would regularly for 40 years. This insane popularity was no surprise to Hanna-Barbera, considering they wanted him to be the lead in the first place. And with his star rapidly rising, his time had finally come. In 1961, after 35 cartoons across 39 total episodes, Yogi was transitioned from the Huckleberry Hound Show and into his own syndicated program, The Yogi Bear Show. 
This series took on the same formula, but with Yogi in the presenter role, introducing three cartoons weekly. There were of course Yogi cartoons, which continued as normal, as well as two brand new character focused cartoons, Snagglepuss and Yaki Doodle. The series introduction, once again, drew inspiration from the Barney Bear cartoon, directly ripping one of its gags. This was a commonly used gag however, originally appearing in 1939 Captain and the Kids short Petunia National Park, and also appearing in 1959 Augie Doggy and Doggy Daddy cartoon in The Picnic of Time, featured on The Quick Draw Show. While the Yogi cartoons were a continuation of those from The Huck Show, with little to distinguish the two sets from one another, the new ones did have a tendency to be a little wackier and more outlandish, with some episodes even taking the pair out of Jellystone altogether. They also saw the introduction of Cindy Bear, Yogi's love interest, who, much like Boo Boo, often tries to rein in his shenanigans. The Yogi Bear show ran until 1962 for 33 episodes. The first 32 new cartoons were the standard length, while the series finale, Yogi's Birthday Party, was the first full length Yogi cartoon. It saw Ranger Smith planning a surprise birthday TV special for Yogi and featured a number of major Hanna-Barbera characters appearing as party guests. While this wasn't a major crossover event, it was the first time Hanna-Barbera had attempted something like it. For shadowing what was soon to come. While new Yogi adventures weren't produced for a few more years, with exception of a short 1963 crossover on The Flintstones, their latest TV sensation, Hanna-Barbera were hard at work producing something even bigger. Feeling that their characters had enough star power to be successful on the big screen again, the duo began developing their first theatrical feature film, 1964's Hey There It's Yogi Bear, which also happened to be the first feature length theatrical animated film based on a TV show. In this 90 minute musical comedy, one of Yogi's shenanigans goes wrong, and Cindy is accidentally shipped to the San Diego Zoo. Yogi and Boo Boo must then escape from Jellystone and go on a wild cross country adventure to save her. While the movie utilised numerous limited techniques, it's largely considered a fully animated movie, with a bigger budget allowing for a more fluid, refined and lavish animation style, not seen in any of Hanna-Barbera's productions to that point. Though the movie is a lot of fun, received decent reviews at the time and has since gained a cult following, the movie was a box office flop, grossing just over one million dollars, about five and a half million short of Disney's then most lucrative movie, Lady and the Tramp. Animation historian Greg Urbar speculated that if it had existed in an earlier decade, the movie might have had a bigger impact on filmgoers, suggesting that Hanna-Barbera was competing with itself by doing a movie with characters people could see on TV for free. Also in 1964, Hanna-Barbera attempted to capitalise on the success of Yogi by introducing a sister series, featured on their latest showcase program, The Peter Potamus Show. Breezley and Sneasley introduced Breezley Bruin, a polar bear described as Yogi's arctic cousin, and his sidekick Sneasley Seal. Just like Yogi, Breezley was a comical and resourceful bear, and his series saw his numerous attempts to break into the local military base camp Frostbite run by the temperamental Colonel Fuzby. The series quite clearly used the Yogi formula, with some episodes even full on remakes of earlier Yogi's. Though Breezley was voiced by Howard Morris, he still retained a slow and dopey vocalisation. If it's what I think it is, Sneasley, it's about time. Naturally, Breezley and Sneasley didn't gain the same popularity, only resulting in 23 cartoons. Yogi's popularity, however, hadn't waned. In fact, it was only growing. In 1966, he shared a comedy album with The Three Stooges, one of the most popular comedy groups of all time. In 1968, the first of an eventual chain of Yogi Bear's Honey Fried Chicken restaurants opened in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and in 1970, 
1969, the first of a chain of Yogi Bear's Jellystone Park Camp Resorts opened in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. This chain was so successful, at one point there were close to 90 resorts, making it the second largest campground franchise in the USA. Across this period, Yogi continued to live a healthy life in comics, while Yogi cartoons continued to air on television under the banner of Yogi Bear and Friends, a package series that recycled old shorts from both The Huck Show and The Yogi Show. It wasn't until 1972 that Yogi returned with brand new adventures, starting with Yogi's Ark Lark, Hanna-Barbera's first instalment in the ABC Saturday Superstar Movie Anthology, a series of hour-long animated tally movies produced by various studios, the first ever series of its kind. In Ark Lark, Yogi and the residents of Jellystone, practically every major Hanna-Barbera animal character of the 50s and 60s, build a flying ark and leave the park to search for the perfect place, a mythical land free of pollution and deforestation and untouched by man. Not only was this the first time Yogi would properly leave Jellystone, but it was the first major crossover of Hanna-Barbera characters. While part of the Superstar movie anthology, Lark Ark also acted as the extended pilot to Yogi's Gang, a series which premiered on ABC Saturday mornings in 1973. The series followed a similar premise, with Yogi and pals off on globe-trotting adventures, fighting ecological issues and bigotry, going up against villains like Dr. Bigot, Mr. Prankster, Greedy Genie, Gossipy Witch, Lotta Litter and Captain Swipe. Each episode ran at 30 minutes, making it the first Yogi series to present full-length episodes. It was also the only Yogi series to utilise a laugh track, a staple of many Hanna-Barbera cartoons. The series ran for 15 new episodes, with an additional two a re-edited and split-up version of Ark Lark. After its run on Saturday mornings, Yogi's Gang was syndicated in the Fred Flintstone and Friends weekday block, paired with episodes of various Flintstone spin-offs and other more obscure Hanna-Barbera series of the time. In 1977, Hanna-Barbera debuted Laugh Olympics as part of the two-hour Scooby's All-Star Laugh Olympics ABC Saturday Morning Block. The series was a parody of both The Olympics and ABC's Battle of the Network Stars, which saw celebrities competing in sports challenges. As such, Laugh Olympics crossed over 45 Hanna-Barbera characters in an Olympic-style event series, presenting wacky, comedic, competitive sports in different regions around the world and beyond. It featured three all-star teams, with Yogi the team captain for the Yogi Yahooies, predominantly comprising of classic 50s and 60s characters from the Yogi, Huck and Quick Draw shows. There were 16 Laugh Olympics episodes in the 1977 series of Scooby's All-Star Laugh Olympics, while eight new ones aired alongside repeats in the 1978 series renamed Scooby all-stars. Later in 1978, Hanna-Barbera jettisoned the Scooby block in favour of one headlined by Yogi, Yogi's Space Race. This 90-minute block consisted of four individual 22-minute series, including two starring Yogi himself. First was the headliner, Yogi's Space Race, a space set reworking of Wacky Races, which featured numerous Hanna-Barbera characters racing through various galaxies in wacky automobiles, and Galaxy Goof-Ups, which starred Yogi and his pals as intergalactic police officers and saw their antics, well, goofing up, while on duty. Their incompetence, however, would always lead to their ultimate victory. Galaxy Goof Ups was so popular that in late 1978, after 13 episodes, it was separated from the Space Race package and aired alongside it in its own 30-minute slot, consisting entirely of repeats. In 1979, the Yogi's Space Race series was also separated from the package, its 13 episodes re-airing in their own 30-minute time slot. Between 1979 and 1982, Yogi starred in a series of educational films aimed at students. The first batch were presented as part of the Hanna-Barbera Educational Film Strips collection and saw Yogi teaching personal safety, medical equipment and procedures, citizenship and rulemaking. A second batch were properly animated and saw Yogi teaching earthquake preparedness and drug abuse resistance. 
In late 1979, Yogi co-starred in NBC Christmas special Casper's First Christmas, a crossover between Yogi and his pals and Hanna-Barbera's Casper and the Angels series. The 30-minute musical special saw the tunes celebrating Christmas together in the first and only crossover of Harvey and Hanna-Barbera characters. Then in 1980, Yogi was given his very own Christmas special, Yogi's First Christmas, a 90-minute syndicated tally movie which saw Yogi and Pals thwarting attempts by two villains to ruin Christmas. It also featured re-recorded songs from the Casper special. Given that this was a tally movie, it was produced in limited animation, however did feature slightly more refined animation with smoother movement. In the later 1980s, Yogi's first Christmas was split into four parts and syndicated as a one-week strip series airing the week leading up to Christmas. In 1982, Yogi starred in an another Christmas special, Yogi Bear's all-star comedy Christmas caper, a 24-minute short which saw Yogi and Boo Boo escaping Jellystone and hiding out in a department store posing as Santa and an elf. Naturally, the pair are joined by their regular roster of Hanna-Barbera pals, as well as Fred Flintstone and Barney in a rare crossover appearance. Christmas Caper likewise featured a more refined art style. In 1983, Yogi debuted as a balloon in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, with a series of short animated bumpers complementing the NBC broadcast. Oddly, these shorts saw Mel Blanc substituting for Butler in the role of Yogi, and Butler instead voicing Boo Boo. The Yogi Balloon appeared in the parade the following two years before being retired. In 1985, a brand new Yogi series debuted as part of the fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera syndicated block, Yogi's Treasure Hunt. The series saw Yogi and pals, on assignment from Top Cat, travelling the globe aboard a ship and going on various treasure hunts, all the while attempting to beat Dick Dastardly and Muttley to the punch and avoid their dirty tricks. The 20-minute program ran in the block until 19. 88 for a total of 27 episodes. Between 1987 and 1988, Yogi starred in three 90-minute tally movies in the Hanna-Barbera Superstars 10 series. Firstly was 1987's Yogi's Great Escape, essentially a feature-length Yogi cartoon, returning him to his traditional formula for the first time in 25 years. Then Yogi Bear and the Magical Flight of the Spruce Goose, a world-hopping adventure featuring various other Hanna-Barbera characters travelling the world and helping people in Howard Hughes' Spruce Goose aeroplane, somewhat inspired by Yogi's gang. This one also has the weird honour of being the only animated tally movie inspired by a real-life historic airplane. And finally, Yogi and the Space Bears, an out-of-this-world sci-fi voyage that saw Yogi and Boo Boo kidnapped and cloned by invading spacemen. While the other tally movies were produced in traditional ink and paint on Cells, this was one of the first Hanna-Barbera productions produced in a digital ink and paint workflow, sporting much more lavish visuals. Yogi also made a brief appearance in 1988's The Good, The Bad and Huckleberry Hound, Huck's only movie in the series. With his three headliners, Yogi had more than any other character in the series, all of which mark Butler's final performances before his death in 1988. That year, Hanna-Barbera launched the new Yogi Yogi Bear Show, a 24-minute series not only featuring repeats of classic Yogi cartoons from the 61 Yogi Bear Show, but also debuting a brand new slate of 7-minute Yogi cartoons. These 45 new shorts returned to basics, once again presenting stripped-back stories starring the original Yogi crew in Jellystone and utilising the original formula. The series introduced Greg Burson as the new voice of Yogi. In the same year, Yogi had an incredibly brief cameo in a pup named Scooby-Doo, appearing in the woods at a campsite visited by the Mystery Inc. crew. In 1990, however, Yogi returned to more outlandish adventures in Fender Bender 500, a short-form revival of Wacky Racers. The series was presented within Hanna-Barbera's morning series Wake, Rattle and Roll, and took the form of five-minute cartoon shorts, again seeing Hanna-Barbera characters taking 
part in eccentric motor races. Yogi and Boo Boo were seen driving the Jellystone Jammer and won five times over a total of 50 episodes. The series was more contemporary in nature, featuring relevant jokes and fresher animation. Not so much however as 1991's Yo Yogi, which debuted on NBC Saturday mornings and depicted Yogi and his gang as teenage crime fighters, working for the LAF Lost and Found Agency, solving mysteries at the Jellystone Mall. It's easily one of the most bizarre Yogi entries, which is certainly saying something, and can only be described as very 90s, particularly in the character designs, costumes and personifications. Naturally, the show was well received by younger audiences, though Joe Barbera was not as impressed, commenting, they screwed it up by redesigning him. They made him look like a whoremonger. If you have something that works, don't screw it up. The series, which ran for 13 30 minute episodes, usually featuring one full length story, but occasionally two shorter ones, was later syndicated as part of the fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera, and was one of the final cartoons to enter the block prior to its cancellation in 1994. In 1994, Yogi returned to form for 45 minute syndicated TV special Yogi the Easter Bear. Once again set in Jellystone and partly taking on the traditional formula, it saw Yogi and Boo Boo out to find the Easter Bunny, the only one who can save the park from closing down. They however find themselves on a mission to save the Easter Bunny from kidnappers. The special took on a typically 90s animation style, full of vibrant colours and smooth movement. Also in 1994, Yogi and Boo Boo appeared in director video anthology Scooby Doo in Arabian Nights. This 70 minute movie, presented by Scooby Doo and Shaggy, featured two 30 minute short films, inspired by the book of 1001 Nights. The Alaya Din and the Magic Lamp sequence, which parodied Aladdin, saw Yogi and Boo Boo taking the roles of the genie and the genie in training, respectively. The movie used bright, colourful and stylized animation, giving the characters a flatter, more angular and somewhat cheaper appearance. It marked the final performance of Don Messick as Boo Boo prior to his death in 1997. In the late 1990s, Yogi and Boo Boo appeared in a couple of notable parodies. Firstly, a 1997 episode of Animaniacs saw the Warner siblings loaned out to another studio, finding themselves in an episode of Calhoun Capybara and Lulu. Here, the Warners poke fun at the flat and lifeless style of classic Hanna-Barbera cartoons and thwart the pair from stealing lunchboxes. A 1998 episode of The Simpsons featured a gag where Homer dreams that he and Bart are bears named Homie and Bart Bart, while Ned Flanders appears as a park ranger to take back a picnic basket. The four of course being mauled by Homie. I was having the most wonderful dream. I had a hat and a tie with no pants on. And an episode of Family Guy featured a classic gag where Peter undertakes a favour for a park ranger which he describes as the worst thing he's ever done. Also in 1999, a pair of incredibly weird official parodies premiered on Cartoon Network during a Yogi Marathon. Created by Spumco, the team behind Ren and Stimpy, the two shorts, A Day in the Life of Ranger Smith and Boo Boo Runs Wild, were presented as Ranger Smith cartoons, and featured Spumco's trademark stylized gross out style, utilizing crude humor, disgusting visuals, obscene characterizations, and confronting situations. Such such as Smith observing Yogi and Boo Boo in the shower, Yogi and Smith getting into a full on violent brawl, and the trio standing in a line. <clears throat> spanking each other's butts. As official cartoons, these were executive produced by Hannah and Barbera, sadly becoming the final Yogi projects the creators were involved in. A third Spumco short, Boo Boo and the Man, presented as a Boo Boo cartoon, was released in 2002 and produced entirely with Flash for Cartoon Network's website. The cartoon sees Boo Boo beaten up, abused and assaulted by a gang of teenage bullies. These of course were not the greatest or most respectful Yogi cartoons. 
Throughout the mid-2000s, the only other appearances of Yogi were in a series of Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy episodes. In one, the pair, depicted as a pair of aggressive addicts, attempt to swipe Billy's picnic basket before chasing him into a cave. In another, the pair are hit by Hostel Gardo's truck, and in another, Yogi is briefly seen during a musical number. The series presented the characters in Spumco-like crude designs and similarly grotesque gags. In a 2010 episode of Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, Yogi is also briefly seen in the background as an escaped convict at the Animal Asylum. In style with the series, Yogi is seen in a dark and serious design with a modern angular twist. This was clearly a very weird decade for Yogi. In 2010 though, Yogi finally found true form once again in his very own live action CG animated hybrid theatrical film. Yogi Bear, heavily inspired by the original cartoons, saw Yogi, voiced by Dan Aykroyd, and Boo Boo, voiced by Justin Timberlake, joining forces with Ranger Smith, Tom Kavanagh, in an attempt to save Jellystone from being destroyed by loggers. Director Eric Brevig made sure not to contemporise the stories or make the characters hip and different for younger audiences, lest the older audience feel marginalised. The movie depicted Yogi and Boo Boo in CG animation on screen for the very first time, in designs that blended the line between cartoony and reality. Amidst the early 2010s 3D boom, it was also filmed in 3D, not post-converted as is most common. The movie debuted to an underwhelming opening weekend, though slowly crept over $200 million at the global box office against an $80 million budget. However, despite being a somewhat enjoyable, innocent adventure, it fared poorly with audiences and critics, with many using some variant of the line, dumber than the average family comedy in their reviews. Many however lauded efforts to keep the style true and traditional. Following the perceived failure of the movie, Yogi faded into relative obscurity again. In 2018 he appeared in Deathstroke Yogi Bear No. 1, a one-shot issue from DC's Hanna-Barbera Beyond series, which gave characters and stories a darker, edgier and more realistic interpretation. Here Yogi was presented as a realistic bear who hires Deathstroke when Boo Boo goes missing after a heist gone wrong. A comedic buddy adventure, the issue presents lots of slapstick and plenty of violence, making for an incredibly odd crossover that somehow works. In 2020, Yogi and Boo Boo briefly appeared in an episode of the Animaniacs revival during a musical sequence, and in 2021's Space Jam A New Legacy, the pair could be seen alongside other Hanna-Barbera characters at the Looney Tunes vs Goon Squad basketball match, once again in CG animation. This period also saw them appear in a couple of notable TV commercials, including a gorgeously animated piece for Rocket Mortgage, mimicking traditional animation of the Golden Age, and a live action animated hybrid ad for Geico, where they ransack a family's barbecue who are living in bear country. In 2021 however, Yogi and the gang found their spotlight once again in HBO Max series Jellystone, created by C.H. Greenblatt. The series, comprising of 11-minute episodes, focuses on Yogi, Boo Boo and practically every Hanna-Barbera animal character living in the forest town of Jellystone, where they get up to all kinds of antics. While the series is fairly modern in style and features a contemporary, stylized, slightly crude art style, the gags and character depictions mostly stay true and respectful to the originals. Greenblatt has called the series a love letter but not a nostalgia show. Notably, it's the first series to star Yogi or any Hanna-Barbera character in 30 years, the first to be produced by Warner Animation and the first without involvement of any of the original creatives. Despite having voiced the character in various bumpers and other external media since 1992, Jeff Bergman finally took up the role of Yogi in a series. The series was generally well received upon release and has currently run for 30 episodes across two seasons, with a further 40 episodes commissioned. Who knows what's in store next for this smarter than average bear, but for now, Yogi has snuck his way back into the public conscience, up to his old antics for the foreseeable future. That is of course a very clear sign to hide away those picnic baskets.
And at that, I'm throwing it over to you. I want to know what is your favourite Yogi series, movie or appearance. Fire away with those thoughts down in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like to see the Yogi voice evolution video or other cartoon evolutions, check out the links on your screen. Thanks for watching.